Hi, everybody. Welcome to Kubernetes on the Edge Day in Detroit. Uh, I'm, I'm Steve Wong with VMware. Uh, I, along with Tina Zoll, right here in the front row, were uh, members of the program committee for the event. And I also want to thank Mars over there in the back in the white sweatshirt, who helped on the program committee as well. The official theme for today's event uh, that you saw when you registered, if you at least clicked on that page, was that edge computing will be four times larger than cloud and will generate 75% of data worldwide by 2025. Um, I'm not saying that edge four times larger than public cloud with edge generating 75% of data is trivial or wrong. I'm just going to head in a different direction as we open this because every conference I go to has those hockey stick growth things and at least for me, they got old. So I want to point out that we're in an unusual situation lately where data collected by the Federal Reserve documented a huge drop in labor force participation uh, with the arrival of COVID. The reasons are likely multiple and complex, but applications delivered to EDGE already alleviate tedious work that people don't find satisfying like having AI watch video, video streams to classify objects and detect events. And uh, another common application out at Edge is taking orders by kiosks, which can eliminate really mundane jobs. And it's a situation that many of us might be observing or dealing with uh, in the past few years. This is about a new opportunity. You know, we've historically seen things like Hadoop in the early 2000s that were described as bringing the compute to the data. And certainly there is plenty of data at edge, but this is also about bringing applications out closer to the people and the objects that they interact with. There are opportunities related to new types of edge devices and workloads that improve our environment. And the bigger payoff relate to just doing existing stuff in a better way. Suppose we could improve the efficiency of manufacturing or transportation by just 2%. These kinds of advances save resources and improve quality of life and environment. Um, and when that happens, we all benefit from a higher standard of living and a higher quality of life. When web browser experience bogged down at scale in the 90s, we learned how to do things like use JavaScript in browsers and caching and CDNs. Maybe the time has come to, to more generically deal with delivering reliable and performant applications out closer to the users, and to do this in a way that scales and is more manageable. This is a field that some are describing as edge-native applications. And, uh, We've got people talking about that today. I want to point out that WebAssembly was a technology that was originally viewed as another solution that could run in the browser, just like the JavaScript. In fact, it's built on JavaScript. But what if we also look at it as a tech for running massive numbers of applications at edge, possibly in devices or near devices? We have a talk about WebAssembly-based AI at edge this morning. I came across this recently. Uh, if you can process data-intensive workloads such as image recognition in a public cloud, the downside could go beyond just the latency of getting it up to that cloud and uh, bring about um, wasteful energy consumption as this data gets transferred point to point. You know, running 4K 30 frame per second video up to public clouds may be wrong on many levels. Uh, we'll have a talk this afternoon that talks about collecting metrics on container level energy consumption so that you can intelligently optimize workload placement. The elephant in the room relates to the original design of Kubernetes. It was originally designed for large data centers achieving efficiency and availability by running workloads on centrally pooled hosts with very good network interconnects and lots of interchangeable compute nodes. Edge is actually decentralized, often with I.O. and location constraints causing one-to-one -one relations on workload placement. We have a talk on Project Flata, which deals with Kubernetes and Edge. 
the unofficial theme of this is community. Uh, and we want to recognize the event organizers and speakers as this event proceeds, so we'll be introducing the speakers. But I do want to recognize the conference staff, the AV staff in the back of the room, and please join me in getting in the habit of being polite to the, to the staff that helps bring about events like this. Finally, this event is subsidized by the event sponsors. Yes, you paid for a registration, but these sponsors help cover the budget, so I want to quickly recognize them. Uh, first of all, thanks to the diamond sponsors you see here, Red Hat, SpectroCloud, VMware Edge, and they all have booths outside uh, with some swag, so please visit them. We've also got uh, gold sponsors, Arm and Rancher by Sousa. And then finally, Rancher by Sousa doubled up and is sponsoring the video recordings. Uh, as I said, the unofficial theme of this conference is community. So the way to get the most out of this event is to go beyond just passively le listening to the speakers today. Please make an effort to meet the people and hold discussions during the breaks and meals. We'll have a break at 10, lunch at noon, uh, another break in the afternoon, and often the hallway track is the best part of these conferences. So I'd encourage you to make sure you introduce yourself to at least one other person while, we're, while you're here. Um, and we do have a reception out on the terrace um, at the end of this event. So with that said, I'm going to bring on one of those uh, diamond sponsors. So next up is going to be Jeremy with uh, SpectroCloud.